So I was able to get my hands on a skunk that uh, Lawrence Ringo had held out of Salmon Creek since 1981. So Lawrence Ringo was one of the original CBD breeders, a pioneer in the CBD field. And he passed away a couple of years ago and he and I were good friends. And every, everyone called him Ringo, I called him Lawrence, right? Like East Coast name, right? So uh, Lawrence and I had a good relationship and he had this stunning old skunk that was preserved and recently his crew let me access it to hold on to it to keep copy and it just has some of the most incredible uh, burnt rubber like you like when you were a kid and you had sneakers on and you dragged them on your when you're a bicycle that smell of burnt rubber is just so pungent and penetrating um, those type of old smells they're they're things that can't be captured in concentrates so skunks really work off of these, the, some of these incredible smells are esters, they're plant alcohols, and they make it so that you basically have to smoke it as flour because as soon as we try to super concentrate or grab any of those, they flare right off because they're super volatile. So some of the cannabis that was incredible has to still be smoked as cannabis, which to me is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get into varieties that shine as flour, not as a concentrate, not as a rosin, not as a hash, but as flour selected for floral production. And so through Ringo's 81 skunk, I'll get to go back into that time period. I have a beautiful skunk that made it over to Spain in 88, and I was able to get a copy of that. Gorgeous. I have a beautiful cheese that's uh, super high in camphene out of Grass Valley that's been held for an uh, exceptionally long time. And I went in, picked up uh, old skunk lines and sifted through and pulled out some beautiful progenitor males so that I can start to go into these older lines. And what it'll do is it'll jump me from 2017 back into the 80, 90. And then as I go F2, F3, I can start taking the directions into the tones from the past that we no longer have. And they weren't removed because they were bad. They, they were removed because they had too much of a smell. And once that smell was taken away we started to go into visually attractive cannabis more so than scent attractive cannabis and the eye became the 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 judgment and you know that to be true because we all went off on the high time centerfolds and all the magazine pictures that was marketing driven it was designed to create an indoor industry it was to showcase technology and products you could only visually see the flower but the experience was negated and so too was uh, any other factor people soon started to believe that visual was cannabis. Cannabis was a visual relationship. It wasn't a felt relationship. It wasn't experienced relationship. Skunk was an experience. You, you knew you had the cannabis. Everyone around you knew you had the cannabis. And when you were done smoking it, you knew you had smoked it and everyone else knew you had smoked it. And that is something that I think that we want to get back into is some of these more profound spiritual connections to cannabis where it's not just I'm getting high quickly because I need to get high quickly and it looks really good so I can take an Instagram picture of it, but it's a, a true relationship with cannabis on how you use cannabis to increase the quality of your life, why you're using it. And I think that so many of the varieties from the past got pushed away and we, we need to pull them back because that's really where some of these ethereal qualities exist and we have a lot of muddled genetics right now that don't seem to, to deliver that to the user. And I know so because every time I talk about these projects I get a really good response so I know that there must be a lot of us that have this feeling.